The Democratic presidential candidates went after each other at last night's primary debate. Hosted by CBS News, it came just days before the crucial South Carolina primary, where recent polls show former Vice President Joe Biden with a narrow lead in the state. It was Senator Bernie Sanders, though, who was the target of most of the attacks as candidates tried to slow down his surge, coming off his wins in Nevada and New Hampshire. Our Danya Backus has more. Six of the seven candidates who participated in last night's presidential debate spoke at a civil rights prayer breakfast. They are courting black voters here in South Carolina, but former Vice President Joe Biden has staked his campaign on the majority of black voters choosing him. I will win South Carolina. Wednesday morning, he won the endorsement of U.S. Representative James Clyburn from South Carolina, the highest ranking black member of Congress. I'm voting for Joe Biden. But it's Senator Bernie Sanders who's heading into South Carolina's primary with the most momentum. In last night's debate, the national frontrunner was repeatedly attacked over his ideas, his record, and his electability. Bernie and I agree on a lot of things, but I think I would make a better president than Bernie. I do not think that this is the best person to lead the ticket. I am not looking forward to a scenario where it comes down to Donald Trump with his nostalgia for the social order of the 1950s and Bernie Sanders with a nostalgia for the revolutionary politics of the 1960s. Sanders argued his campaign has a grassroots movement behind him that can lead Democrats to victory. Do we think health care for all, Pete, is some kind of radical communist idea. Do we think question, raising taxes on billionaires is a radical let's idea? Let's... CBS News poll after the debate, 45 percent of viewers said they were impressed with Sanders and he made the best case he can beat President Trump. For his part, Sanders went after former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg, who will be on the ballot for the first time next week. The economy is doing really great for people like Mr. Bloomberg and other billionaires. South Carolina voters head to the polls Saturday. 14 states hold contests next Tuesday. Donya back is CBS News, Charleston, South Carolina. For more, I want to bring in Caitlin Huey Burns and Molly Hooper from Charleston, South Carolina. Caitlin is our CBSN political reporter. Molly is our CBSN political contributor. Okay, Caitlin, so it was a really emotional speech that South Carolina Congressman and House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn gave this morning announcing that he's going to be endorsing Biden. People were waiting to see who he would endorse. He says he's doing it because there's no one more suited for the challenge. And I can think of no one better suited, better prepared. I can think of no one with the tech integrity, no one more committed to the fundamental principles that make this country what it is. That my good friend, my late wife's great friend, Joe Biden. My late wife's best good friend. It's pretty emotional to see him. His wife passed away, but she did have a close connection to Joe Biden. How do you think that that emotional endorsement might have on, on Biden and, and his movement in South Carolina? Yeah, an emotional endorsement, a necessary endorsement for Joe Biden, who is looking to South Carolina to be his saving grace. Remember, he's been talking about South Carolina for many, many, many months, and especially coming off uh, those poor performances in Iowa and New Hampshire. He has been looking to kind of restart his campaign here in South Carolina. He's called it his firewall. He has strength among black voters here, who, of course, are a key constituency, making up 60 percent of the election on primary day. So Joe Biden, I think, is coming off a good debate performance last night and having this endorsement from Clyburn, who is a real kingmaker in the, this state. We talk a lot about how endorsements may not matter in politics well anymore. Well, Clyburn's endorsement is really key here because lots of people know him. He has an extensive network. He's courted. He's been courted by all of these candidates. Remember our coverage of the fish fry earlier this summer hosted by Clyburn, where all the presidential candidates spoke. This is a real boost 
boost for the Biden campaign at a critical time when he has to do well in South Carolina. And we just have a couple of days to go. And so we'll see kind of how, whether and how this moves voters. We've seen in our battleground tracker poll at CBS that he's lost support uh, about 20 points among black voters over the past few months. This could help him uh, gain some more traction at a critical time. You know, Molly, Joe Biden told us yesterday on CBSN, uh, you know, after the debate, he, he doesn't care how much he wins by. He just wants to win South Carolina. But what is he saying, though, about his debate performance? Well, I think that the Biden camp is very excited about it, and they feel very um, happy about how he performed. After, after the debate last night, while everyone was in the spin room, I kind of cre crept out of the out of the spin room and and spoke to some of the Congressional Black Caucus um, staffers and individuals who are who are attending the debate, and some other Democratic officials, um, and more establishment types, and they all said that Joe Biden had a very strong night. Um, last night was kind of difficult because all of the candidates were essentially um, they showed they sort of showed this air of desperation, all sort of fighting for as much time as they could they could get um, from the moderators. But Joe Biden, really, from the start, he came out swinging. And that first answer he gave and saying, you know, pointed to the Mother Emanuel Church just a block away from that debate hall, you know, th that started him going and, and really was an appeal to the African-American voters in South Carolina, the base of his support. I love how you say you, you crept into the Congressional Black Caucus area and were able to talk to them. This is a Molly Hooper, as we best know her, getting details and information. Uh, Caitlin, you know, Senator Bernie Sanders. Right, six foot tall, Molly Hooper, creeping around. <laughs> like, that was what I was imagining in my head, Molly. Uh, you know, Caitlin, when you look at Bernie Sanders, you know, who was going in last night with the win from New Hampshire, from Nevada, did he keep that front runner status? Yeah, he went into last night with a big target on his back. And when he talked to us afterwards in our post-game show, he said, did you hear our name was mentioned a lot, uh, that his name was mentioned a lot? Wonder why. He is now the front runner in the Democratic primary after winning Nevada, showing that he could build a broader coalition than we've seen in New Hampshire and Iowa. And so lots of the candidates went after him, trying to bring him down a notch. But what Bernie Sanders does in this, these debates is that he's able to kind of get back to whatever message he wants to stay on. So I don't think that the attacks from his rivals really had an effect in terms of blunting his momentum. That was the biggest question I had going into last night. Because remember, in the debate last week in Nevada, uh, Democrats really missed an opportunity to go after Sanders if they wanted to uh, cut into his front runner mm -hmm. status. They had focused their time on Michael Bloomberg. Last night, that changed. But we didn't see a real cohesive strategy from these Democrats. They went after him on a variety of different things. Uh, and Bernie Sanders was able to kind of stick to what he's always talked about. And he doesn't apologize for anything. So this is something that has uh, endeared him to his supporters. And we'll see if it's something that helps him grow his base here in South Carolina. You know, there's a CBS News poll. And among Democratic debate watchers, we found that the viewers have mixed emotion about how the debate made them feel. 47% said the debate made them nervous about the candidates. Molly, I got to tell you, as I was watching, I was eating a handful of goldfish from my kids' lunchbox <laughs> yesterday. I was so nervous about everything. What were the takeaways from yesterday? I think that if, if you pulled the Democratic caucus up on Capitol Hill, you'd probably find the same results, 47 percent, a little bit nervous. Um, and actually, it's kind of reminiscent of 2016 after those debate performances by Donald Trump and other Republican establishment figures like Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, Rand Paul up on the stage. There was a lot of nervousness among the Republican caucus, the conference, about Donald Trump. Who is this guy? Because just as Caitlin said about Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump does not back down and he does not apologize. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why his, his supporters are so vigorous in, in their support for him and so energetic in getting out to the polls because they like they like a politician who's not being a politician and not sort of talking out of both sides of his mouth, his or her mouth, so to speak. And um, again, though, that does, you know, again, that those nerves are probably a bit warranted because Bernie Sanders and what and what he represents and what he says he represents do does cause some does cause some sort of head scratching among Democrats on the Hill saying, how are we going to accomplish essentially your vision of what a government under President Bernie Sanders would look like? So and that leaves them a bit nervous. Yeah, yeah. So the Trump campaign released a statement last night and they're saying it, it doesn't matter who emerges from the carnage, President Trump <laughs> 
will dominate in November. Caitlin, you the president's got a rally in South Carolina just the day before the primary. What's the strategy for the president right now? Right. He's been offering some counter programming at every turn in this primary. He's been following the candidates to Iowa, to New Hampshire, to Nevada, and then back here in South Carolina, where he will be uh, on Friday hosting a campaign rally. Uh, he is trying to dominate the conversation. And this is something that Democrats are going to have to contend with throughout the course of this primary and in the general election. And for Democrats, we've been talking a lot about over the past few months about all the issues that are important to Democrats, health care chief among them. But we've talked about how over and over and over again, we hear from voters that they are looking for someone who can take on Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And that's why these debates are kind of critical for a lot of voters to see how these candidates might be able to take uh, on the president. Uh, for Elizabeth Warren is a good example, kind of using Michael Bloomberg as a proxy for Donald Trump in these past couple of debates, uh, trying to kind of show what it, it might be like. And so he's certainly hovering over everything and he's trying to make a statement in these uh, early states that he too is uh, is is going to be be around and dominating the conversation all right look forward to more from both of you out there in South Carolina Caitlin Huey Burns and Molly Hooper thank you both thank you